Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you a few tips on drawing this really bright colourful hummingbird here. Before we get into it, I just want to say that the reference for this one is from Pixabay and I will leave a link in the description below for you so you can go and check it out if you want to draw along as well. And also if you want to follow along with the full tutorial, it is available over on Patreon in real time if you fancy following along what I'm doing as I'm doing it in real time. So let's get straight into this one I'm starting with the eye as I always do I'm not going to go into too much detail on the eye because it's pretty much just using dark sepia really nice and dark with that very bright highlight I've left the paper white for this the main details in the eye here are adding in a little bit of like a white lip around the eye like the kind of eyelashes or the eyelids of the eye just made sure that there's a really really tiny little gap between the actual eye and the rest of the feathers and everything and to create those little feathers around the eye I've just used some small dashes of the dark sepia to create those kind of it looks like little eyelashes but they're kind of really tiny feathers that surround the eye there so this hummingbird is really bright and colorful and I'll get into all of the colors and like the kind of color families that I've used as we get into that but first of all we're just working on some of the more kind of neutral natural tone feathers around the eye and the face here so these are very dark in color and I've started off with some layers of brown I've also added in some um, Caput Mortem violet and some Caput Mortem and some blue and everything here and blended them out with the white pencil as well the white pencil here has just allowed to blend everything together but it's also going to act as a tiny little bit of a highlight through here as well the beak here I've made sure that the underside where we have a lot of shadow is the darkest and then the top side we've got a lot of highlights so I've pretty much just left that with a layer of white and then tried to layer some very light colours of blue and some purple down over there to create the kind of highlight there so you'll find in most highlights you do have like elements of blue and stuff and purple so I've added those through there as well the bright feathers on the head here you can see that I've put down a base layer for this I did actually use some warm grey one um, but you can just go through and use no base or just go straight in with your your bright colours I often find that adding just bright colours down before uh, a base of using like a grey base it tends to make the colours a lot more vibrant but if you do want a slightly more muted tone then go ahead and add a layer of grey because that's going to help to just dilute the colours and desaturate them just a tiny bit. So the head here has quite a lot of these dark feathers kind of coming over but I have added in these little elements of green and turquoise so I've added those down first and then I've just gone in with my darker colours I've used some walnut brown I've also I'm also going to go through and use some dark sepia as well to really get the saturation and that dark tone coming through but I've added in the blues and the greens and some of the yellows down first so that we can add those darker colors over the top so that we can really desaturate the colors and alter the hue a little bit so you can see it's they kind of look a little bit more brown on the head rather than this really lovely light greeny blue that you'll see coming down the backside of the wing through there one of the first things that i wanted to tackle with this hummingbird were the scalloped feathers that are on the neck so any kind of reference photo you'll find of a hummingbird you have a lot of these scalloped feathers and the way that i tackle these as you can see is i have outlined each little individual scallop and i've got all of the kind of dark tones in i've used um a brown tone i think it was a van dyke brown and then gone in so in some of the darker areas with some dark sepia and really added in the shadows and the shape of all of those first and then I've gone through and added in some green gold in this case for uh, creating a really nice luster on the red and the orange tones that are going to be showing through here. So I've added the green gold all the way over and then I'm just working a little tiny scallop at a time and adding in the red tones. So I'm working from the kind of yellowy orange tones all the way up to the darker red tones. I'm layering these down on each individual scallop as you can see and working one at a time. I find this way the easiest because otherwise if I work on this whole clump together I will get 
insanely confused because it can get really confusing um, if you're constantly like looking back at a reference photo and then looking at your drawing it can get a little bit confusing so I like to work on these individually and then I can see exactly where I need to add highlights and where I need to yeah add all of the shadows and all of that I've used a little bit of the Sakura jelly roll pen in the white to add a few highlights onto the red here I found that I went a little bit too dark so I needed to incorporate a little bit more lightness so I found the easiest way to do that was to use the jelly roll pen to add the white down and then I will go through and I will kind of work some colored pencil back over that so it's not quite as bright white. The white feathers on the chest here I've just created by adding in some warm grey one and then I've layered down various tones of brown. I've used some green gold and I've also used some purple and blue tones as well to help to create the shadow as the kind of white feather morphs into the chest area of a slightly more browny tone of feather. But we're working on the wing and I'm kind of adding in all of the darker edge to these brighter colors i find that really important so that i know exactly where to stop with these bright colors so i always add that in first and you can see this time i'm not going down with a base tone of gray or anything like that i'm going straight in with these bright colors and i'm using a light pressure on this one of the most important facts or techniques to remember for drawing hummingbirds and creating iridescent feathers like this is to use similar colors so in the case of the red area, I used obviously reds and I went through oranges and yellows. And if you look at the color wheel, those all sit next to each other on the color wheel. So they're kind of like a color family. And I'm doing the same sort of thing for the blues and the greens here. So I'm using a combination of yellow, blue and green. And if you look at the color wheel again, they all sit next to one another. So they're going to create a really nice harmonious color palette. And then when it comes to adding in the shadows and all of the details, I'm using darker tones darker varieties of the colors that i've used in the base so i'm using some pine green i'm using some cobalt blue some cobalt green and i'm also using dark indigo as well so i'm using the darker tones of the colors that i've used as the base to help to create the details and everything and I've also used some solvent blender through here as well to help to smooth everything out and that's a key thing to remember as well if you want some really nice smooth feathers especially in this case especially when you need all of the colors to kind of meld and bleed into one another I find using a solvent blender in the form of a pen like I have here I've used the finesse blender pen or using something like Gamsol or something to help to really get all of those colors blending with each other really nicely I find that incredibly helpful when trying to create iridescent natures in the feathers like this and I hope you can see that the it's kind of really worked to my benefit here by using that blender and also by using the blender pen I've been able to add some white colored pencil back over the top the white colored pencil that I've used is a Holbein soft white I really love using that white because it's really nice and opaque and it does go over even the lighter colors as well as the darker colors as well so now all of those feathers are in on the back, I am turning my attention to more of the kind of separated wing feathers here. So those feathers that you can see individual sections of. And you can see the technique that I'm using by adding in all of the darker areas and outlining each of the little individual feathers first and adding in the shadows. So I'm doing this using a dark indigo pencil. I'm using the dark indigo because there are blue tones in the bird and I do find that this is really nice to use as kind of like a mapping out colour and then if I need to go darker I can add some walnut brown over the top of that and even some dark sepia to get even darker if I need to. So once all of the feathers are kind of outlined, as you can see the process here, I start to fill in the mid-tones. So I start to add in lighter colour and then I work all the way back up to that darker colour and I blend it all the way through. We've already got a good portion of the shadow in, as you can see that I did add in quite a lot of the shadow. So I don't necessarily need to add in too many dark colours, um, but I will work all of those mid-tones over into that shadow as well so we get a really nice blend. So you don't just have the dark shadow colour and then you filled in like this mid-tone section. So I'm making sure that I do add all of those colours that I am adding down into the predefined shadow area as well. 
one thing that I did find with this particular drawing is that I did need to use a tiny little bit of a black pencil to really get the depth of tone and get the contrast in there correctly so I did use a little bit of a black pencil but you don't have to use black if you are afraid of using black but in this case I really did need to use it to add in all of those nice contrasty areas. The lighter feathers on the underside of the chest here, I just used some ivory to add a base. These feathers are really nice and light and fluffy looking. And there's also a few of these kind of blue and green feathers kind of dotted around. So I've just taken some of the colors that I've used in the wing and then I've added those using some shading and a little bit of a fur line technique as well to add some of that colour in little tiny patches through the chest and the breast of the bird there as well. And I've also used some brown to help to blend down the area of the white underneath the red and I'm going to transition that down into this area as well. A little tip for when you need to add white overlapping the dark so you can see on the edge of the wing there I've got some white feathers which are overlapping the dark and to do that I have used the darker colours and I've worked them from the dark area in the opposite direction that the feathers are flowing and into the white area so I've gone in the opposite direction that the feathers are flowing and that helps to create a really nice natural overlay look I'm doing it again here as you can see it just helps it to look a little bit more natural and you get that kind of overlap of the white over to the dark. I also go ahead and use a white pencil to help exaggerate some of those whites coming over as well. Again I've used the Holbein Soft White which is really good at being nice and opaque over these dark colours um, and you can see I've used a lot of brown and yellows and everything through the chest there and I've just used the fur technique so I've used some tapered lines to help to create all of that texture going on. So the feathers look really nice and soft and fluffy and that's why I've used the fur method because it kind of does mimic fur a little bit. But in the case of feathers, in this case, I have kind of spaced out the uh, pencil marks a little bit more than I would with fur because I want to get all of those colors showing underneath. So I'm not grouping them really close together, I'm leaving them quite far apart. That helps to create this really fluffy texture so you can see all of those underlayers and it just makes it look a lot more like feathers than the fur, which is a good key technique as well. So if you were to group them together, you'd get a bit more of like a fur, um, a bit more of a flat look as well. Whereas if you're leaving them a bit more open, you get a nice fluffy texture. To finish this one off, I just added in some feet and this tiny little hint of branch. The feet were just added in using some dark sepia and some dark indigo and I used the white over the top to create a little bit of a highlight so there wasn't too much detail that actually went into the feet here because as you know I hate the bird feet. <laughs> that's pretty much it for this tutorial I really hope that you enjoyed it and if you want to follow along make sure you pop over onto patreon if you want to follow it in real time but otherwise I will catch you guys in the next video bye